Hey Reap Crew, what's up? So it's been a while since the last upload. I just literally have not found the time or any good content to upload. So just looking around on Reddit and finding some interesting stuff. So we'll give this a go and get some more stories. Try and get back to the regular uploads. I know this is something I do keep saying, though it is something I want to do. I want to grow the channel a bit more. Just finding the time is a bit tricky at the moment. And straight into it, we'll go for story one. This one's called The Demon in My Closet. Back then, I wasn't good at sleeping. I could never get a good night's rest. It was in my freshman year at college when it started. My parents bought an old house in a small neighbourhood, closer to my dad's job and my high school. At first, it was just a house. It wasn't any different from the one I lived in before. If anything, it was nicer. The previous owner even left behind a piano in one of the rooms upstairs. For the first week, it was nothing but pleasant. But then everything changed. I remember hearing footsteps in the house. I would call out to them. But nobody ever answered. Of course, me, being naive, I never thought anything of it. I had even imagined it being my dog, who was still adjusting to the house and was constantly barking in random parts of the house. That night, I woke up in a cold sweat in my room. It was pitch black, so I turned on my lamp, but I couldn't move my body. I always heard of sleep paralysis, but I didn't think it would or even could happen to me. I was stuck in my bed and I tried to close my eyes, but the whispers had begun. It sounded almost like an old man mumbling just at the foot of my bed. And there he was, a figure shrouded in darkness. I couldn't make out any features and could only just see that they were holding a small knife. I told myself out loud that it wasn't real. Maybe I didn't tell myself that. Maybe I was begging to God that the person at the foot of my bed wasn't really there. Then, almost like magic, I woke up in my bed again, but this time it was morning and I could smell my breakfast being cooked. This would happen for the rest of the week. The figure would appear in different parts of my room while I was paralyzed. Sometimes it was near my bed. Other times it was standing in the doorway. Most commonly, however, it stood in my closet. I hadn't even opened it as I had been too lazy to unpack everything I had. The figure never spoke and at the most, it's only mumbled, inaudible nonsense. I even began to joke about it to myself, giving myself sleep paralysis demon name, a Jerry. However, this wasn't the falling action of my story. It only got weirder and more concerning. I would hear noises in my room in the afternoon when I wasn't upstairs. I would also see things in the corner of my eye. My dog at the time wouldn't even touch the suitcase. One day, I was yelled at by my parents to put my stuff away into the closet. I was hesitant at first, but as I suspected, nothing was inside of it. Nothing, of course, except a water bottle. It was the same brand my family used, and it deliberately had the time to collect any dust. Someone or something brought a water bottle from the kitchen downstairs into my bedroom closet.
At that point, I was beginning to question why a figment of my imagination needed to drink water. I asked my parents, but they thought I was making a weird excuse to get out of cleaning my room. So that night, I came prepared. I plugged my charger into my phone and left the camera to record overnight. Slightly hidden behind my lamp and alarm clock. And what I saw on that recording still haunts me to this day. Hours of recording passed by with nothing. I was starting to believe that I had imagined everything, but I watched it open. I watched my closet door slowly open, then the figure came out of it. I had slept almost well that night with no paralysis, so I watched in horror as the figure leaned over me and just watched. Finally, he retreated back to the closet and it came back holding something. It was a bowl of food, I swear to God. It was the same bowl my mum thought we forgot to take. It watched me as it ate whatever was in the bowl. After watching for a few minutes, it stretched out its arms and folded itself underneath my bed. I sped up the recording on my phone, looking for the part where it went back into the closet, the same closet that was still open at the time. It never left. The demon that lived in my closet wasn't a demon at all. It was a person. And they were still under my bed, listening quietly. I could hear a small shuffling noise under me. I could remember jumping up and running out of my room. I had never jumped that far before. Making sure to be nowhere near the damn bed. I got my parents' room and locked the door and showed them what I'd just watched. I remember it like it was yesterday, the way my dead dad took a rifle out of the closet. It wasn't ours, but had been left behind. Just like the piano, he quietly loaded it and opened the door. He crept into my bedroom and watched him unload three rounds into my bed. When the first two hit, I could hear the screams of the person under it. But the final round is the one that ended it. My parents called the police and told them what had happened. After the investigation, the police told my parents it was clear that the person had been living inside the attic for some time. There were cans of food, water and a bowl with half-eaten rodents of some kind inside it. That I had failed to notice was the inside of my closet. And that was the end of it. Of course, that man wasn't upset. I ended his little game so early. So he came to watch me sleep sometimes. And this was long after his death. But these times, I could hear those low mumbles to this day. I can remember what he always said so clearly. He always mumbled, I'm hungry. That's the creepiest story you ever heard around campus. There was a story about this Catholic school I attended before. There is one girl named George in our school before. This girl is quite smart and every girl is envious of her. One time when she was assigned to clean the classroom and this group of students bully her and this bullying continues until she was pissed off about it. George suddenly committed suicide inside the school and those who bullied her would suddenly go missing. Late night delivery. I always worked the late night shifts for my pizza delivery job. When I was working there, 
I lived in the mountains in upstate Pennsylvania. It's a very rural area. Most of the drivers were on roads that were in the centre of trees and woods. The scenery was one of the main reasons I enjoyed my job. I was delivering a pizza one night, taking a shortcut through some back roads. I knew about that the GPS didn't, when I saw someone jump in front of my car. The loud thump confirmed that I had indeed hit whoever this was. My heart pounded and I was in shock. I just hit someone with my car. I immediately got out to see if they were okay. It was a man wearing all black, laying motionless by the passenger tire. He had a huge birthmark scarfing above his right eye. I had no idea what to do. I was freaking out. What was this guy doing this late in the middle of nowhere, jumping in front of me? But things only got weirder. I ran back to my car to grab my phone and call the police. When I went back, the man was gone. What the? I said to myself. Something was not right here. Was I going crazy? My heart was racing as I drove off. I ended up still delivering the pizza and heading back to the shop. When I walked in, my boss saw my disheveled look. He asked what's wrong. My jaw dropped. I was about to tell him when I noticed the TV on behind him. It was a news report about a man killing his wife and two kids. He had escaped police custody and was at large. They showed a picture of the man and the man who was the picture of a middle-aged man, tall, white, greasy hair. Over his right eye was a massive scar, just like the scar from the guy I hit tonight. I called the police and explained what had happened. I told them what road I hit him on. They sent two units out to the location. Later that night, the police informed me that they had caught the man and have him in custody. They found him about half a mile down the road, limping and hiding in the woods. The officer informed me that by my hitting him with my car, I had helped capture a very dangerous and top priority criminal in our county. I was even given an award for public duty. When I think back on the story, it was easily one of the most insane and terrifying experiences of my life. So that does it guys, if you enjoyed the stories, please like, leave a comment about which story you like most, and be sure to hit subscribe as it's free, and it really supports this channel. I hope you do enjoy the content, and find more in the playlists I have on the channel, and I'll be uploading again soon.